So, um, call four from summer 2013. Question one. I express that in partial fractions, a bit unusual because they don't give you any clues as to what you're doing with this. Um, so you need to recognise the form that it would take. Uh, I really need to write out the whole thing. Anyway. So we, we've got x plus 2 and x minus 1 squared as the factors of the, the bottom line. So we would have something over x plus 2 plus something over x minus 1 and also something over x minus 1 squared. So we'd have a look at that because remember if you've got this repeated root you need to have it there squared and on its own. And then we multiply everything by the denominator to get it to say x minus 7 times x minus 2. And multiplying carefully through, the x plus 2 would cancel to leave us with a times x minus 1 squared. One of the x minus 1s would cancel to leave us with b x plus 2 x minus 1. And finally, the x minus 1 squared would cancel to leave us with c x plus 2. And it would look like that. Yes, Abby? Don't understand that step. Right. You've, you've got a history of not understanding that step, haven't you? Right, so let's look at that step. If we multiply by the bottom line, then can you see, if we multiply by the bottom line, it will cancel out down there, wouldn't it? So you'd be left with just the top line on that fraction. If you did, if you did 3 fifths times 5, you get 3, don't you? Because the 5's cancel out. Right. Okay. Here we've got um, we've got a times x plus two x minus one squared over x plus two. We've got b x plus two x minus one squared over x minus one, and we've got c x plus two. One squared. Okay. okay. You've got it? Yeah. Because then it all cancels. And I like this step, but you said you've already got it, so I don't really need to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway because I enjoy it. So those bits cancel, and we're left with that, that line there. Good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now we see we've only got two values that we can sub in because there's only two uh, factors in there. So we're going to start with those two values because that makes it easier to begin with. We're going to sub in x equals 1. Which, being very careful with our calculations, gives us negative 6 times minus 1. A times 0, so that would go. B times 0, we're left with C times 3. So C equals 2. 6 divided by 3 equals 2. So that's a good start. Um, we then put in x equals minus 2. And we get... Uh, that's minus 9 times negative 4. Now this time, um, put in minus 2 and you've got minus 2 take away 1, which is minus 3 squared. So we've got, have we got 9a out of that? We've then got no b's because the x plus 2 bracket's there. And that means that 9a is 36. And I, um, when I, when I did this, I spent a long time on this question because I got an answer and it just didn't feel right to me. I tried subbing in a few values to check if it was right and it wasn't. And it took me ages to spot the mistake. And when I, the first time that I quickly went through this, I did 36 divided by 9 and wrote 6. <laughs> and it's that kind of mistake that we, we all make, don't we? Those, those stupid kind of just really simple stuff. And they're the mistakes that's hardest to spot because you look back at a mistake like that and you just think, oh yeah, 36 to my I wouldn't have made a mistake. Oh, that's obviously 6. Anyway, it was 4. Um, now we need to think of another value that we can put in there. And this is the point where we choose any value we like because there aren't any that, that make it particularly special. Zero. Zero. That's as easy as anything, isn't it? So we get minus 7 times minus 2 is... Now this would be a times 1, because that would be minus 1 squared. This would be b times minus 2. 
and this would be c times 2. But we know some of those things, that's negative 14 is, is it, 4. Is it, is it negative 14? Good. <laughs> we'll come back to that later. <laughs> Minus 2b <laughs> plus 4. And then we think, oh, hang on. If you multiply two negative numbers together, you get a positive. <laughs> that should be positive 14. Isn't it? <sighs> giving us minus, uh, two, some answer. B equals minus 3. Or something. It does. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. There we are. Great. Of course, if you said A is 6, then this would be wrong as well. Because you... Anyway. So therefore, we've got... What was it? Oh, 4 over x plus 2. B was minus 3, so we've got minus 3 over x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 1 squared. And the heck it is. And, and it feels like you're starting with quite a simple 5 marks, partial fractions. But it's so easy to start off with daft mistakes and drop them out straight away. So don't make silly mistakes. That's the math day message. Don't get anything wrong. That's, that's another <laughs> math day hint. Words of wisdom. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maths and stuff. We finished that